welcome back folks. We're continuing our playthrough of Amnesia Machine for Pigs. Reading every word we can find. So we're starting this part off with uh, another technical note about the machine. Or the factory or something. A series of collecting vents has been installed along the ceiling at this stage of the line. In the process of stunning and bleeding, the product often expels stinking vapors from its digestive system, which can be collected, condensed, and used in the methane boiler to drive the engine as a whole. In this way, the more product is processed, the more power becomes available to the machine, and productivity is actually increased. A simple stroke of genius, but one that encapsulates the benefit of self-regulatory automation. To build on that, there was something that we saw earlier that I only recently remembered. Uh, they mentioned that all of the viscera from the pig, all the blood, guts, miscellaneous gut contents, etc., are going to the same holding tanks. I wonder if that somehow relates to the uh, fe fetid liquid they use for fuel. Interesting. But that is a truly pleasant mental image, too, I'm sure. <laughs> well, yeah, that is what this game excels at. Mmm, delicious fluid. Delicious, precious bodily fluids. Hmm. So that's not the way then. Everything is started. The one door is still a six door. Conveniently flickering light for atmosphere. Yeah. It seems to amazing how lights only happen. ever start flickering when you're near them. Yeah. I was going to say, it's, it only ever seems to happen when the man pigs nearby. Is it a side effect of the el gathered electric charge? <laughs> well, they do imply yeah. they have used static electricity pretty heavily in here, so it's at least pseudoscience plausible. Mm -hmm. There's one over There's here. There's one of them lurking in this mess over there. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Luckily, they this are easy to run away from. I just gotta remember where I'm supposed to go, because I died. That thing really time. wasn't much of a threat, was it? We just ran uh, by. Okay, that guy might be a bit of a problem. Or uh, apparently not. Nope. Run is this away. The tone for this has been more horrific than horrifying. Yeah, I believe you're correct. I agree with that. It's interesting how we've how far tonally we've strayed from a mansion with creepy voyeur rooms. I almost said almost forgotten those were in the same game at this point. Yeah, it's weird. Isn't it? Well, we went from mansion to church to the beginnings of the guts of the machine. Mm -hmm. With surprisingly brief transitions between them. It's pretty jarring. Along well, with our trusty lantern. April 30th, 1899. The crate arrived this morning, and I had it delivered directly to the workshop. The body is remarkably preserved, although there is a subtle yet nauseating stench of damp and rot. It is humanoid in shape, but has suffered severe skeletal deformity. Remnants of leather straps encase the torso, which is deformed, with evidence of substantial muscle mass and displacement. 
It is difficult to ascertain whether this unfortunate is the recipient of some barbarous surgery or was born deformed and an attempt to force his gnarled body into some semblance of humanity was made. What he is I cannot tell, but I smell the orb upon him, and I suspect my great uncle's presence in his curious condition. So it can be done. We can reshape the body into a tool, accelerate the process of Mr. Darwin's evolution, but here my great uncle and I part company. He chose men as the subjects of his experiments, but men are difficult to control and rotten with sentimentality. No, we require a new creature for our chattels. Loyal, clever, strong, easily sated. So that's the first reference directly to the orb from the original game. I believe that this is now officially in the same universe, and not just subtle references. What's interesting is the children found this orb then. That can't be yeah. good. So, assuming that Mandis is the guy writing all these documents, that means he must be related or something to um, another orb user or one of the original characters from the first game. I'm suspecting that the Amnesia game is canon in here. Right. But it would be... It was pretty strongly impri implied that uh, Alexander was... Um, you know, the guy who, who was really the expert at doing all that stuff was from some sort of future or parallel reality or something like that. Professor A? That would be interesting, but if Professor A is Alexander, then who's the uncle? I doubt no. it's that convenient of a coordination. It's probably different people, just same universe. But you never know. Right. The orb yeah, is just tricky. Some other or maybe it was even Daniel. I swear you've got to go into that dumb waiter or something. Yep. There we go. It was also oh, interesting in that last yeah loading screen. So while we're on the, the loading screen, another reference to a jaguar and something about eggs in here, um, fever, basically all the all the standard imagery. But that note um, mentioned that the uncle was using men as the test subjects and turning men into some sort of uh, tool or, I don't know, slave labor force or something. Here they're uh, taking some other species, is... presumably pigs, and uplifting them. Yeah. So maybe that's what the, uh, the enemies that we've been kind of running away from thus far are. Maybe they're... Although the word loyal but isn't only been... applied to pigs. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose. I'd assume dogs if they're talking loyal, because that's the traditional loyal animal, but that's not a safe assumption. There are enough Early reports of then? loyal pigs, though, that... But there are those reports at the time. I don't know. Some people keep pigs as pets. True. So maybe it's an early experiment, or maybe it is these are the pigs. These are the pig men. Will be interesting to find so, out. Yeah. Sabotage. Bruised, battered, but alive. I have survived the saboteur's best efforts. He and I are now locked in an epic struggle, but I am driven to find my family, and I will prevail. Ignore the madness about me. Do not consider what cruel and unspeakable acts have been committed here. Find the way to the build. Drain the flood. Free your children. And just in time for us to, uh... Banana phone! Find the entrance nearby. The children weep in the darkness, and the flood waters continue to rise. They don't seem to be okay. weeping when we see them. It's interesting how the mysterious other knows which phone to call. That is true. There's a note on the table, isn't Oh, there it is. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to open it up until 
uh, Andrew's sentence had finished. July 15th, 1899, so that's pretty close to the first note we found. In order to facilitate assimilation of tissue groups, a compound is required or the cells will not bond. Disposal of non-bonded subjects must be immediate and using incineration or we risk continuous animation without form. This is unpleasant. A simple compound of one part Brennenberg infusion vitae to one part orgone monad dispersal fluid is sufficient. This can then be administered intravenously to the subjects following reassembly to maintain bonding. The compound is unstable and highly light reactive. Once in the body, the Schumann lamp can be used to activate the compound, but outside the body, it's highly corrosive and can even destroy small quantities of metal. All right, so this was a nice little part. I think it's we a found a hint for how to uh, uh, for a puzzle. Yeah, that was also everywhere. I don't know what orgone monad dispersal fluid is, but Brennenberg infusion vitae is straight out of the first game. And this plays into the point you were making earlier about Frankenstein. Because it sounds yep. like he's literally this putting is pieces of stuff flesh together. together and reanimating it. This is classic Frankenstein. The reference to Orgone here proves to be a very interesting anachronism, as the game is set in uh, 1899 and Orgone wasn't originally proposed until the 1930s by Austrian psychoanalyst Wilhelm Reich. Orgone was a bioenergetic expression of human sexuality, and as such its repression by society could manifest in physical disease. As Reich also proposed that Orgone could cause organization at any scale, several proponents also held that societal disorganization could be caused by a lack of sexual expression. This was explored further in the 1971 Serbian film W.R. Mysteries of the Organism. Either way, its presence here is interesting, as the setting by far predates the idea, and the characters also take a very negative view of human sexuality, removing procreation from the descriptions of fornication, and continually claiming higher purpose in mechanical creation. Uh, I'm fast-forwarding through bits, but yeah, no, it, it was um, in that room where we found a note. Poof. Vanishing. Yeah, it was, um, it was in that. It's a locked door next to the chair. The oh, okay. Sort of pointing at. Oh, hey, a note. A warning. <sighs> Poor grammar. Inflamed it is, burning it does, bleeding from each hole, fore and aft. Leaking down my legs, blood and excrement, my lungs are in my vomit, I pass clots of my organs now unto the filthy stone. Drink this, he says, and I did drink it. I did do that too, because of the changes, they ripple inner me. My teeth sneeze out and scatter like mice in the dark. I cannot find them all, gathered what I can, push them back into my gray gums with my fingers, but the nails are all weepy and falling out. Drink it, he says, it'll help the running of the fever, because not us all can take the change on the other table, a beast under a blanket. I never wanted to see under that, but he drank it too. He passed it under the blanket, and I heard it drink. Dear God Almighty, how can a man shit so much blood and still live? Classy. Yep. What a truly volatile substance. So my question is, who wrote that? Presumably a test subject. But I thought they were supposed to be converting pigs, not men here. Yeah. But yeah. also, who would yeah. write that while suffering from those symptoms? Yeah, really. It could be they were under strict orders to uh, maintain a viable record of this, but it's hard to motivate somebody with that much um, 
uh, hard to motivate somebody in that much mortal terror, danger, and pain. Wow. I think I might die. It fell onto his hands and they eroded. Alright, maybe not. To stumps. To stumps. Next time we will use an equal mix of infusion vitae and orgone disperser. No, no, just take him out. You can dump him in the river for all I care. You know, if they put out another sequel, they're going to eventually have to explain that a side effect of these various serums they like to put on people is a unstoppable compulsion to, do to write down what's happening to them. Yeah, I remember the first game they had almost the same reaction was described by the guy... Um... Uh, who was played by Sean Wallace. I don't remember the character's name. Or Wallace Sean. I don't remember the character's name, but it was that guy who they poisoned the wine of. Uh. Alright, we got another note. August 20th. Took delivery of another batch of imbeciles today. They are the sorriest specimens of humanity I've ever seen. No one asks where they go. The authorities of Bedlam are simply happy to reduce the overcrowding in their teeming, stinking halls. We measure their skulls, check their teeth, give them laudanum to pacify them. They wait in line, livestock, dull brown eyes and filthy skin. Many soil themselves as they wait. Into the manipulator they file into silence. I hear the hissing of gas, I hear the dull groaning as teeth are removed, as bones are reset, I hear the pigs screaming. We have removed all the mirrors after the process, it is their reflections that troubles them the most. Afterwards, when they sleep, I walk amongst them. My children, I whisper to their dreams, you are my children now, I have children once again. And your forms imperfect will be the engines to make my own blood flow again. Alright, so there's definitely stuff, two right? people making creatures here. Something isn't right here. I, I swear it said earlier that they are making creatures from pigs or dogs or something, not humans. And yet, there we are. Combination pig-humans. Yeah. Over there, place it in the corner. What? Maybe they're using both? You think I speak Prussian? Do I look like an inbred hog, sir? Could be Who two different people experimenting here, but that would just get confusing. Me be. Yeah. Could just be reckoning back to that paranoid schizophrenia th reference. True. That would Maybe be on the one hand appropriate he's trying to for use an people. amnesia game. And on the other hand, he's trying to use pigs. Which explains why the factory is so confused and disorganized if he's giving con conflicting information. Ah, crap. I'm thinking maybe he's infusing pigs and people together. It definitely sounds like somebody's Frankensteining together pigs and humans. But we don't know who is doing what. Because there's very clearly two separate... I think there's two separate programs in here. But it just doesn't make sense yet. Chillings? Oh, no chillings. Wait, was that a child's toy on the floor? There's been like a couple of teddy bears and stuff like that around in some of the shelving. There's yeah. a teddy bear right where the kids were laughing. Right by the blood. 
a bloody teddy bear. Pleasant. That, oh, that note almost also seemed to imply that the children were dead, because it was like, I shall have children once again. Yeah. Yes, but he could also be quasi-disowning the children, because it sounds like his wife didn't survive their birth. Mm-hmm. So it could be that he has that paranoid split between hatred of his blood and not. So it could just be, these are now children I can call my own without having that, again, that specter hanging over him, as implied by some of the earlier oh. notes. Of his wife? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, and we got a note. August 4th, 1898. So this is one of the earlier ones. More experiments with compound X. Took the dog and injected it with strychnine. After the expected convulsions and spasming, it died just after midnight. I immersed the body in a large tank of compound X and introduced an alternating current via an induction coil for a period of three and a half minutes. Partial return was induced. However, damage incurred prior to death was retained upon revival, meaning the dog continued in the acute state of strychnine poisoning until I put a bullet in its skull. But drowning, perhaps, yes. It is, after all, known to be the kindest of suicides. If one were to drown, replacing the fluid in the lungs with compound X should theoretically be perfectly possible as a revival method. That's proper Frankenstein there. I wouldn't be surprised if some of that was word for word from parts of uh, the original Mary Shelley work. Although I don't believe I have that memorized. <laughs> why not, man? That's why you're here. I just can't believe they're calling something Compound X in a game like this. So, they're talking about drowning in the compound at the same time your children are stuck in a bilge? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. It's weird, though, because this is really early. Like, that note was... from a year prior to everything else in the game. Is it done already? Nearly, yeah. I don't think that was nearly dramatic enough to warrant closing the door. No, no it wasn't. I think that was more of an excuse to close off the route. All that work for that. It's like the dentist. That special light that does your phones. On today's world's worst ideas, a light activated thermite. Okay, now we're gonna show up for the camera. Uh oh. That was like something out of Breaking Bad. <laughs> Topical. I don't know why I bother crawling down the ladder. It's not like fall damage is really worrisome. Every now and then fall damage in games just sort of kills you when it shouldn't. Yes, but that was a falling loading ladder. screen. <laughs> ah, now the good old fall loading screen. Yep. Which in 9 out of 10 games nails. are a good way to survive. <laughs> the exception being nails. I want to be the guy that movie the game. And no wood. What kind of a carpenter are you? <laughs> you know, I... Yeah, whatever. I, that game... There's is plenty like, of bad jokes that can be made there. Holy Christ symbolism, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> this game has been kind of surprisingly right on the, the biblical stuff, although it did have a little bit in the church because... <coughs> well, church... Yeah, but you, have you know, to make your machine, machine god references. Turn of the century, though. You know, you're in the middle of like all that rebellion against 
the central church as it stands and the you know, modern enlightened way of thinking so it would make sense to avoid most of the giant overt church symbolism and it would be sort of it's crappily rendered that would be really ironic um, with the rebellion against the church because Mandis is, is obviously the industrial captain you know exalting machine god at the same time existing in a period where rational thinking was trying to overtake the church led by that industry or am I a butt it fits it's plausible alright not a lot of certainties yeah it's all theories. So we got October 22nd, 1899. Naturally, once bled, the product must be scalded, dehaired, and scraped ready for gambrolling and evisceration. For this, we pass them through the steam reservoir, which is kept at a constant temperature by passing excess high pressure venting from the engines via the boiler and a series of copper pipes into a stone chamber just below the workhouse. At the center of the machine, there is a component that must be kept at a consistently low temperature, which controls operations of the processing of products throughout the system. Alongside this, refrigeration is of the utmost importance in maintaining product quality, and also requires heat to be removed from certain areas of the machine. Two problems are therefore combined into a single solution, the removal of heat from some areas and the requirements for increased heat in others. Conducting panels draw heat using principles of convection regulated by the boiler and sending freezing air along one set of pipes in one direction and superheated vapors in another. That's perfectly normal meatpacking plant material. That's an odd that's a position Isn't here. It dangerous allowing this filthy discharge to collect so close to the core. We can use the flow to drive the turbines. There will always be a torrent of excreta flooding through these tunnels. We can use this to supplement the steam production and ensure constancy. God, the stench! This fecal matter is the true product of the age. I'm glad there's no such thing as smell o vision. <laughs> My mysterious friend is correct. The sewers are indeed flooded. To descend further, I will have to find the local sluice pumps to drop the water levels. The smell is almost unbearable. It makes me gag. Why should the saboteur have flooded the tunnels, though? What did he hope to achieve? This saboteur is awfully specific and good at targeting you. Oh goody, a maze. Probably with a monster. Quick, where's the ball of yarn? <laughs> now, now, everyone except Labyrinths only have one path. Invisible. The first. Fly the Mantis, drain the waters, open the way to the bilge pumps. We are waiting for you. We? Your kids, I guess? Another temple? They don't trust the that. <laughs> Alright. August 1st, 1899. Several of the older forms have breached their containment area and escaped into the sewers. They remind me of my limitations. There is this is no chelm and I am no what is that word? Eliahu. At least not quite yet. It is the heat generated from keeping the doorway between open that is to blame. We cannot simply pack them about with coolant as we do at the center where the doorway is. 
the later versions are kept safe by freezing temperatures of those towers. Up here, where the air is hot and fetid, they become overheated, and their duality tears them asunder. As the other place flies from their cells and their vitae splinters, they live sporadically torn from one world to the other and back again in violent, unpredictable bursts. For a few seconds, they are creatures of this world, and then they are torn away and cease to have physical form. And this vicious ripping back and forth between worlds has driven them quite insane. I have ordered the, effective, the affected areas sealed and will not allow my loyal workers to enter. These are damned places now, the abode of failed experiments, ghosts of fear and spite. So somehow they've got, they managed to create pig monsters that can phase in and out of reality. Brilliant. Apparently Sorry, insane angry pig monsters that can phase in and out of reality. <laughs> At least they don't seem to be able to control it very well. Just think, phase bacon, you eat it, and then you don't have to worry about the calories later. Or possibly, <laughs> you put it on a sandwich and it v evaporates before your very eyes. Or possibly it shows up in your shopping cart when you didn't want to buy it. On the note okay, of bacon, I don't want to go bacon. too much further. On the note of bacon, I don't want to go too much further uh, time-wise, so... I'm going to stop the installment here, and uh, we'll be back later with more reading about a machine for pigs. Cheers, Internet. A machine for writers. <laughs>